1987, Noonan and Adelaide successfully completed their seventh year together. After the soul-destroying losses to Glenelg in the 1985 and 86 finals, they took their third chance at the flag and thrashed the Bays by 14 goals. In the build-up to the 1988 season, the usual changes to team lineups and coaches were underscored by the return of the King, Neil Curley, after a three-year absence. Curley took up the reins at Elizabeth, making Central District the fifth league team he's coached. With four premierships under his belt, Curley was the first coach with proven league experience appointed by the Bulldogs in their 24-year history. At the other end of the scale, bottom team South Adelaide replaced Rick Davies with John Reed, a former Panther player and reserves coach. West Adelaide appointed Kevin Morris to fill their coaching vacancy, and Kevin's experience as Essendon reserves coach would be invaluable in rebuilding the Bloods. John Cale's departure from West Adelaide in 1987 would prove to be Port Adelaide's gain in 1988. Cale's record of four premierships for the Magpies was ample qualification for the top job at Alberton. Cale's return was brought about by the sacking of Russell Ebert in circumstances that hurt many Magpie supporters. Unfortunately for Ebert, the club's search for success had left its favourite son out in the cold. Woodville soon lured the four times McGarry medalist to fill the void left by Malcolm Blight, and now Ebert would have to prove himself as a warrior. Success is essential for survival in a competition that is coming under increasing pressure, and the season commenced with South Australia winning the Bicentennial Carnival, setting the scene for a great season. And this is the way it was, 88. Round one opened on a warm Easter Saturday. The match between Glenelg and Norwood at Football Park was the only game for the weekend. 16,000 fans turned out for what appeared in the first quarter to be a classic battle. Going into the second quarter, Norwood were in command, but Coach Corns moved Scott Salisbury onto the dynamic Richard Anderson, and the game swung back to the Bays. was it touched by Clavey? No! Davis Hall. Passes it off to Anderson, has an airy, Chigwidden, beautifully done, gets it out to Christie, Christie goes for home with a long one, Carey's going to ship it through! Dominant in the centre was Glenelg's Alan Stringer, who played the second half with a broken nose and saw the Bays through to an eight-goal victory. McIntosh comes in, and it's on. The round continued the following Saturday when Port easily beat Sturt and Torrens thrashed the Panthers. At Footy Park, a win for new coaches Ebert and Morris was crucial. Sewer wanted it more and the mark's been paid to Sewer. That was a courageous mark. Now here's a chance, Kluge stands his ground. Well done getting back there was Filky. Gives a chance now was Carl Herbert. Getting back to Peter Widow. Zips that, gets it out. Harris looks for running play. Gets clear. No, can't. Fuller back to Harris. Out wide as Tottenham. Should give it to him. No, the Shepherds on. Harris on the left leg. Shoots for goal. And that could be game, set, match. McKinnon followed down. Pushed the ball forward. Oh, and underneath that one, a good diving mark. Harvison there from behind. Got hands around the ball. The Warriors had the game in their grasp, but Grantley Filkey, Kieran Spawn and Shane Malcolm kept the bloods in the race. There's an opportunity, Quarter has two, if he kicks third, they hit the front, he has, he's got it! West Adelaide have hit the front! 30 minutes into the final quarter, where's the siren? There it is! The Bloods have done it! The players really gritted their teeth, they were more desperate in the last two or three minutes of the match than they were all day, and I'm sure if they had applied themselves and they will learn a lesson from it, in that manner earlier, we may have uh, been in a better position. At Elizabeth, another thriller where North Adelaide clawed their way back into the game to grab the lead against Central District only five minutes into the final quarter. Oh, gee, we've waited for it all day. And he's finally hung there suspended and takes the mark. We're 13 minutes into the last quarter. Here they go again through McCadden. His handball was not a good one, but it's given them a chance now through Chapman. Chapman to Graham. 45 metres out, Philham Graham puts a long one in towards the square. Long, high, looking for Rudy Mandemaker. Oh, oh, Derek, kick it! Oh, gee, he's kind of like this last quarter. This is Tiller. Tiller from half-back. Puts it high towards centre wing. Peter Bennett out man there. Had two to jump against. Going back was Paul Sullivan. He flips it on for Smith. Beaten by pace of Burton, who tried to get a handball on. 
Andrew Jarman to brother Darren. Here's a chance for North Adelaide. They won't catch him. Darren Jarman towards goal, and he has got it. Great goal by Darren Jarman. His fourth. And would you believe it? 20 minutes into the last quarter, the scores are all tied away now. Going to the far side, looking for Trevor Rowe. No, Trevor Rowe couldn't get there. Derek Kicker's there, though. Only seven kicks for the afternoon, Derek Kicker. There's a great kick by Kicker. at the moment, we're in the time on and they lead by five points McAdam had an awkward bounce Sanders being held on to gets a handle away, here's a chance for Burton Burton's got a passing saloon passes through half forward around where he goes, the goal will put them in front and he's done it oh, superb play by Burton sold the dummy to Lee got round him, booted a goal and would you believe it, North Adelaide are back in front by a point this is Klomp taking it out of the air. His handball was ill-directed. Opportunity for Thomas. Now Chapman. Chapman can go all the score anyway. Has put the dogs in front by a point. Well, it's just been, uh, in the, it's been indicated by the timekeepers that there's less than 30 seconds to go in the game. So North will have to go straight up the middle to try and win this. They've been uh, watered there by Gilbert McAdam. Vicious debut by this young man. Oh, great game by Gilbert McAdam. And fittingly, there it is. It's the end of the game. Gilbert McAdam throws the ball in the air. It's a two-point victory to Central District in their first game under King Curley. 14 goals, 11.95. North Adelaide, 13, 15, 93. And what a game. Tuesday night, and West Lakes Boulevard was busy when the Escort Cup Grand Final drew a record crowd of 31,000 for the playoff between Port Adelaide and Woodville. In a match billed as an Ebert versus Kale affair, Woodville was hot on the trail of its first senior premiership. John Clue, a nice looking kick, geez, he's that a long way up towards Nichols, big mark, oh, Hayden Stevens! Hard work out there at the moment, in goes Parsons, Tottenham, now the running power is Detman, the handball's not that good, Schwartz gets it over, pulling out of Tottenham, the Warriors run it, put a long one up towards full four. Stevens again, Nichols open goal, the Warriors have got their second. 16 minutes plus, first quarter, great game of football here, 10 sports action, Kluge gets it out, here's another chance for the Warriors, oh he's put it under his left foot and slid with through, I think it was Haylock, great goal Warriors. Over the centre line go the Magpies, wanting an attack that reaches a goal, here's a chance now, Hodges gets it out, Harrison hooks around the corner, Heights comes to meet it, the bounce could decide, here's a chance hooking around the corner now is Borlase, he's going to bounce through. Kicks down towards centre wing, Parsons up on, right mark. Gets it back now, Parsons having a fine first quarter, puts it up towards full forward, big leap, Hayden Stevens again. Might have got a free kick there, but Harrison boots it out of defence for Port. Up towards centre half order, that's a top mark. Heinz can't find it, ball as it was. Three north, the three warrior footballers back there, can't get it. Here's a charge, Heinz again. Or oh, too fast for Negri. Booted his first. Port Adelaide, two and three minutes and right back in the fight. As Neville Roberts has indicated, they're, uh, they're really working hard for them. The Warriors are a smooth moving machine compared to Port Adelaide, but that doesn't matter. The Magpies back in business. Clute through half forward, onto the left boot. Could this be a quick reply? What a great goal, John Clute. Well read, Arvin. Gets it out now. Templeton hooks around the corner. Loose ball. Clue. Shocking bounce. This could bounce through. I think that's a goal. An unbelievable goal. I think Clue, there's no Templeton's kicked it. Well, if anything's going to win a final, that was unbelievable football on 10 sports action. And they would like one right now. Johnny comes over the top, gives a chance to Haylock. If he can get a sit, he'll kick a goal. Grab it towards the run. Brilliantly done. Great Shepard. Haylock's first. His second, 10-7 to 6-7. Yes, Russell Ebert, a fine achievement in his first uh, season with the Warriors. Kicks towards the half-forward line. There it's taken. Siren's gone. The Warriors have done it. History has been created in the 1988 Escort Cup. The Warriors have won their first major title. They are Escort Cup winners in 1988. In round two, Torrens had more use of the ball but lost by 21 points to West. 
At Woodville, the Dogs had the Warriors at their heels all day and hung on to win by 14 points. Norwood was being charted as Premiership material after running over the Blues by 14 goals. And the Panthers were savaged by 73 points at the hands of North Adelaide, giving the Roosters their first win for 88. Up towards Bourne at the back, gets his hands to it, can't complete it. McKinnon whips it out, quickly into the open goal, Tony Filkey. That's it, game, set, match, goal number three, Filkey. At Glenelg, a tough, hard game, and for Chris McDermott, there was more opposition than he'd counted on. They're bottling it up, they're a goal in front, and I think they're pretty satisfied with what they're doing. As Chris McDermott has a chat to a Port Adelaide lady, and back they come at him. <laughs> Chris, I wouldn't go in there if I were you, pal. With the game evenly poised at three-quarter time, the Bays ran away to win by 39 points. throwing. Not, got to curve, picks up. Nick Chickwitten looms up as a dangerous player again. Chickwitten's long drop punt goes towards goal. I think it's through. He's it. Oh, the knives were out for Merv Kane in round three, but a nine-goal win over South put Sturt on the board and stifled the rumours. At headquarters, a fiery game between the Redlegs and the Roosters. couldn't get it out, Andrew Jarman, only as far as Sheedy, oh, he got tripped, and the umpire's going to give him a free kick, Anderson bolts, oh, he, she's off, Jarman is in there, it is on, Payne, Jarman, Kelly, Clayby, Justin Scanlon, in they go, out they go, now Darren Jarman's in the action as well. Carlo couldn't mark it. Michael Ace picked up 39 disposals as Norwood fought off a strong challenge. A 16-point win, and the Redlegs were in second spot on the ladder, while North were showing signs of regaining their Premiership form. Half forward right, the running player has thought, Ace just going to mark this, he's on his own! Streaming out At Richmond, the confused coaches confronted the umpires at three-quarter time. It didn't clear up any problems, but Glenelg went on to an easy win. Front of Nichols, couldn't control it. Harbison had the handball smothered. Well done, Grimbold. Marshall in turn. Best man on the ground, Alan Stringer. He can go all the way. Lines up. In fact, it's Ralph. Ralph's got it. Well, after one goal, four, and one out of bounds on the ball. What a goal to pull out. Anzac Day saw a double header at Football Park, and the crowd streamed in to boost the round attendance to over 43,000. First up, a victory to Port Adelaide, and Central's first loss under Neil Curley. Darren Smith kicked six goals for the Pies. Kick it. His touches have been few and far between. He was uh, appeared to be concussed in the first quarter. The umpire is going to play that mark. Ball goes towards Brown. Scott Lee from behind. Hodges crumps, punches cleverly forward. Martin Leslie, a lot of time. Enough experience to put it over the top. Well done, Martin Leslie. Well done, Darren Smith. The bounce on the edge of the square. Smith on the left leg. Oh, what a magnificent goal. Straight through the middle. Van Dommel on the left leg, puts it in the air towards Van der Maker. The big fellow's there. Oh, what a brilliant mark. Harris to full forward. Livers the second game saw oh, West Torrens oh, stage an unbelievable oh, comeback to hold third spot on the table, and a winless Woodville were ninth. At the back, Brig Mark Lindsay. Half forward line, whipped out. Oh, intercepted beautifully. Weston gives a chance, pays. The bounce will favour Detman, left the footy behind. Werner with a chance if he can pick it up. Grant desperate in defence, Werner does it well, into the pocket, he tries to shrug off the tackle, shoots for goal, a magnificent goal! The Eagles got a chance, or Taylor loses the ball, he's got to go back and get it, he's got to run into trouble, gets out of it, they go forward to the half forward line, Hannah's up there with him, Schwartz, Hannah, the Eagles fight on, 29 minutes gone, and it's a charge here, Christensen, open goal! Experience, 31 minutes gone, 
The Eagles by two points. They've come from the clouds, they've won it. So sound, unbelievable finish to the footy match. Oh, we were gone. Yep. We were definitely gone, probably from 15 minute mark in the last quarter, but I don't know. It, I've never seen, in my time at Feverton, the, the guys rally in a crisis like they did today, and uh, full marks to them. In top spot with three wins, Glenelg was set for another big win in round four, but Merv Kane and the double Blues have a good record against the Bays. Damien Kitschke booted six goals in the Blues' 11-point victory and helped to maintain that record. of trouble and he's hurt but he's up he's tough bounce comes through Heinrich on his knees gives out to Kim Russell Russell to Cobblestone he's in trouble gets rid of the tackle from Donovan back to the center back to Kim Russell he can get around and have a shot great tackle Tony Simons what a victory it'll be for the Blues the publicity hasn't been their way in recent times McDermott over the top the Bays are fighting on like a good side shot Siren's gone the Blues have done it. Mervyn Kane is ecstatic. Well, I guess you could say it was pretty sweet, but I think overall, from the point, from the club point of view, it was great that we were able to get a, get a win against the side, the top side that hasn't been uh, beaten so far this year. And um, yeah, I suppose you know that uh, it's good to get that under belt, and you can smile for a day or two anyway. At Norwood, Port Adelaide had been stunned by the death of former teammate Anthony Williams and allowed Norwood to control the game early. In the second half, the Magpies, with George Fiacci in inspirational form, held the Red Leagues to only one goal six. A few left footers in the Port Adelaide back line. And he goes straight to Rodney Maynard. Over to Jared Thorpe. Here's Thorpe's chance. On the move. He feeds it across to Stephen Rowe. On his right foot. He swings around and kicks it. A tough goal by Stephen Rowe. McNeil. He can kick a goal. McNeil. Deep into the goal square. Phillips, the last line of defence. By himself is George Fiacci. Shouldn't happen. Picks up the ball, comes around. No, he won't feed it on. He should have. He should have handballed, I felt, but no, he's a better. He's got better thoughts than I have. Up high. Kelly leans back. Picked up by Justin Scanlon. Handball to Jennifer. David Payne. Looks like. Oh, goal to Payne. Oh, it's through. It's through. Rodney Maynard left foot off the ground. Kevin Maynard. Was it Rodney? Rodney Maynard it was. No, that's low. Who's in front? Who is that? It's Dillamore or Brown. Brown is the player. Brown has snuck in front of the pack and has taken a telling mark. And this Who is a very believed? important one. Who would have believed that? Uh, Phelps will kick the ball so poorly, Peter. Obviously, Brown did. And he's got a throw. That's his 10th kick. That's Port hadn't won at Norwood since 1981, but they strode away with a hard earned emotional victory. Norwood a 7 13, Port Adelaide a 9 11. South Adelaide scored their only win for season 88 against West Adelaide and moved off the bottom of the table. On top were Central, Glenelg, and Port, each with three wins and one loss. Five teams had two wins and two losses, but Percentage placed North and Norwood in the five, followed by West, Sturt and Torrens. Escort Cup Premier's Woodville had yet to pick up a win, and they languished at the bottom of the ladder. Returns at the full forward area. Roberts is in the emotion there, that carried well Port to its great seat. victory over Norwood in round four evaporated in round five, leaving the pies flat and lethargic as the Roosters whipped them by 36 points. In other games, West went down to Norwood and Merv Kane's joy turned to sorrow when Torrens bounced back from their inept showing in round four to defeat the Blues by three goals. Woodville's pre-season form was non-existent as they recorded their fifth successive loss, this time to Glenelg by 126 points. South Adelaide showed improved form again for three quarters at Football Park, but with big Rudy Mandemaker kicking six goals, the Dogs ran away in the last quarter, winning by ten goals and keeping top spot on the ladder. Graham got it back to Bubner, whose kicker was long to half-forward goal. Man to make.
Baker used his body well. Down it goes. Smith raving the crumbs. Goes short. Kick it. Kick it has the ball, but he couldn't mark it. He paddles it in front. Around the corner. Oh, sheer brilliance. We haven't seen much of kick it today. That goal was a gem. Peter, Peter Carey played his 447th game, setting a new record for playing the most a senior games. It seemed only right for the Bays football. to celebrate by taking and top spot on the ladder away football. from the Bulldogs. Peter Carey is a legend. He's made number five Guernsey a legendary Guernsey. Today he breaks the Australian record of league games, 447. A marvellous effort in the uh, big crowd here at Glenelg Oval in the vicinity of 12 to 15,000 have all stood as one to applaud a marvellous achievement by a marvellous player. McAdam will give away the handball that he doesn't want to, hooks around the corner. Back there is McDermott. Can't get the kick away. Oh, I don't know whether it's a goal or not. Man, no, he can't. Oh, what a fluke goal. Chick with it. Oh, well done, Chick with it. He touches the ball on the ground. He might try it again. I think, yes, he does. He's going into goal. He might have a shot now. He hangs it up. Looking for... Not quite finding Steve Bickler. Braddy, let the ball go. Oh, Hodge run. Oh, it's a marvellous shot for goal. It's a goal. A great goal by Kim Hodgman. He's fourth for the game. Paul is Norwood destroyed South Adelaide by 12 goals and Red League centre man Richard Anderson dominated the game, kicking four goals in the process. Pushes the ball in long. Pasco from behind sets him down. Oh, he's got it, the big fella. The hall pulled out, gave him the opportunity. He was named the reserves originally. Puts me to Butler. Butler in all sorts of trouble. Anderson does that well. Puts pressure on, steals the ball, goes going. What a champion effort. He's no kick. Panthers coach John Reid's scathing comments about umpire David Elliott saw a report being issued and Reid eventually was fined $250. On Adelaide Cup Day, Woodville finally broke the ice with a 51-point victory over Sturt and the Warriors moved off the bottom of the ladder. But a big leap from behind and that's a mark. Randall Jolly now. He has a panic to move in. Kicked a goal in the first quarter. Tenth kick. Nichols up very high. Up too early and that's a mark. No, a Pikeneer says play on. Picking it up was Clem. He went onto the left foot and he's bottled it. Clem has got a vital goal. Back to centre half forward. Behind. Court played West in the late game and the Bloods were storming home in the last quarter with a chance to win. But one incident turned the tide back to Port Adelaide. Brian Edwards goes to the wing. Underneath it there is Miller, can't take it. Quickly Burgess down from that half back line. He belts it forward. West Adelaide have got players there. It's out of play, you'll find the ball will be taken. The umpire doesn't know. They've kicked the goal and it's going to come right back, Neville. Umpire Ross Campbell could not hear the boundary umpire. It's out of play and now this is going to provide a huge controversy. West Adelaide have booted a goal, it's going to be negated. Filkey cannot believe his eyes. He was just doing up his bootlaces. The ball will come back 100 metres and be thrown in at centre wing on the outer side. What a blow to the bloods. And this will be talked about for weeks. Coming in there quickly, Obbs puts it out wide, Brown. Brown goes for home with a long one. Marshall back there, Hodges in there as well. Oh, a free kick! Oh, what a place to give a free kick! Marshall stood his ground, and up by Harrison said that's a push in the back. Scotty Hodges, acute angle, kick number 12, six goals towards the golf course end, there it is. And I think he's hooked it too quickly. What's the result? It's a goal. Oh, that one will be talked about for weeks. It's Justin Smith Big losses with a hallmark of round seven as Glenelg beat Torrens by 12 goals. Central's cruised to an eight goal victory over West and South suffered another thrashing. 127 points at Adelaide Oval against the Magpies. It's McDermott, he looks into goal, he'll try and use it. Goes to Whitman, finds him. Thinks about going on, he does. I don't know whether that was a wise thing to do. He goes into the square, buttering by himself. He goes, goes. At the parade, the red legs were all class with nice top performances from Ash, Anderson and Rowe as Woodville went down by 18 goals. Sets it up for Payne. Rowe's there, Payne out wide. Payne will get it next. Oh, he had to go down. The only close match was at Prospect, where Sturt beat North by three points in the last 30 seconds of the game. On the next Tuesday, South Australia played Western Australia at Football Park, with Michael Noonan making his debut as state coach.
South Australia were the Australian champions and went into the game as favourites. But the Sandgropers proved to be more competitive than anticipated. Conceding ground. Now has a shot at goals. Going right in close. The umpire starts to move. I think that's home. Goal, Michael H. Noted about the, uh, the Sandgropers. They can run. Adrian Barrett has got the ball. Uses the left boot up towards the right full forward pocket. A chance for the now through Peter Molesto. Here's a big chance for their first goal and he's put it through. Sims dispossessed, in comes McIntosh. Oh, very cleverly done. Handballs are back to McDermott. Now Sims. Sims bustles his way through. Barrett's tried to stop him. Mandamaker's at full forward. Comes out. Shoots the long handball out. Here's a big go for South Australia, but the kick from Bennett, not a good one. Spawn! Oh, the pace there of Santos Stefano, pretty strong. Flips it back. Oh, in there and out of there in a hurry. Stephen Mount. He went down like he was poleaxed. And the umpire's going to give him a free kick. Just have a look at it in replay as he, he comes through. And he couldn't find the footy for a while there. And Alan Stringer in high and very hard. It's getting back. One grab, can't complete it all. That's great work. Now it's Lamb. Molesso lost it. He's back in the action again, however. Lamb can't find a teammate. South Australia got no one back in defence. Now it's Waters. He can't get it. Quickly now it's Barrett. Shoots for goal. And I think he's got it. Now Andrew Jarman, the man that umpire Garrett does not like, puts it up to centre half forward, ace, two grabs, and he's taken the mark. Look, he saw the movement up forward, and the ball is just about going to bring rain. At the back of the pack, Bennett's back there, with him is Brown, down he goes, play on, Andrew Jarman gets it out, here's a chance, McDermott shoots, goals! The penalty is going now to McDermott, kick number six to the half forward line, man to make her up. Crumbs, Ace can't get it. Going through strongly, Lewis gets it out wide now. Here's a chance. Andrew Jarman straightens up for goal, puts it on its way. Western Australia getting back, won't make it. Great goal, Andrew Jarman, his first. SA two in two minutes. Look, the big chance for South Australia now. Whittlesey got it to Simons, he's on centre wing. Plenty of space to move. Jack Painter, three grabs, that's a mark. What can he do with it? Rarely wastes the ball. Having said that, he just wasted one. Andrew Jarman fighting hard for the ball. Nearly earned himself a free kick. The handball comes out. Darren Jarman onto the left boot. He is a magician, Darren Jarman. South Australia lead by 16 points. Dick got it out to Allen. Here's another chance. Oh, that's a great looking kick by Allen. He has split the centre with that one. Bennett can't quite get there. Sims the crumbs. Bennett's going to get a free kick. South Australia allowed to play to advantage. Anders running towards an open goal kick. Coming back. Brilliant kick. Great goal, Anderson. His first. SA needed that one. 13-7 to 10-9. Bit of a stalemate out there as umpire Jack Hilton was about to bounce it. But Andrew Jarman brutally got it out to Stringer. Stringer to Michael Ace. And what courage, Michael Ace. Brilliantly done, Michael Ace. There it is. Redden to Andrew Jarman, best man on the ground for mine. 15th kick to Jarman, puts it out to Aish. Aish tries to get around the player on the mark and succeeds finally. Pike won't run up to him, so he puts it out wide to his teammate in Anderson. Anderson sweeps long, upright, oh. half-forward flank. Darren Jarman, what a freak. Puts it over the top to Chris McDermott. Had his legs taken from under him. Said Ostefano got the ball out, and they'll clear Nish. Geez, one end of the ground to the other. He shouldn't have been there. Holding the ball. Watson gets it over now. Willie Dick gets it over to Rioli. Siren sounds. SA has won it. A top win to the local side. South Australia final score 17-17 has defeated Western Australia 11-13 here at Football Park. Four days later and round eight with the rematch of the 87 grand finalists, North and Grinnell. The full forward he goes, Roberts on the lead, over the hand, touched off hands, is it? No, it's a goal. Great goal, Andrew Jarman. That's the Rooster's second. Andrew Jarman, kick number five, up towards Bennett. Through in Burton, he couldn't bust the pack. Really his style of bust packs, mind you. He's a far more of a finesse player than that. Andrew Jarman got it out. Finally, Cray, quick as you like to Andrew Jarman. A little player on the ground. That's it. Burton's got the ball. Left foot, lines up. That's a goal. North are looking good. They're three goals without a miss. Damage for the forwards underneath that one. Oh, Mark to Grinvold. Roberts goes long. Lang's got the body to take a mark, but Gibbs has got the finesse and the judgment to do it just as well. 
Wilde comes away from the back line. Bradley Ryan's in a lot of bother. Not necessarily his fault. Chigwitten picks up, tackled quickly. Winton, quick as you like. Stringer, that's better. Stringer splits the centre with the left boot. To half four, Arshney Beckler. All that low players are just flat-footed at the moment. I think that uh, unless they have an attitude reversal, they're going to lose the game. Wilde and North did lose by 16 points. And we're now in danger of slipping out of the five. Alan Stringer, Simons, could be two in two minutes. Lines it up, loves a goal. Easy as you like, dead centre. Chaplin. Eight minutes into the last term at Elizabeth, Central led Norwood by 34 points, but the Red Legs lifted to give the home team a real scare. Dummies the tackle, puts it out now, Lally will get it across, open goal, hockey number four! Beautifully done! Half forward line, Lee gets back in, oh great mark, that is a strong mark. They go in hard, ball, well done, the handball went from McNeil to Richardson, sets it up now on the half forward line. There for Maynard. Maynard back to Richardson. Now Maynard's going to have to work hard again. He's got it half forward on his Munns. Coming across Braddy. Munns clear. The legs into a check. Off goes the lead now into the pocket of Ace. What support. Gets it back to Palm. Palm open goal. Payne, I mean, David Payne shoots and he's got it. Off goes Richardson, but he's going to put it up for Hall again. Hall sets himself. Big leap. Oh! Line mark. It's Palm. He gets it out to McIntosh. Look at McAdoo. It goes! Gary McIntosh puts him back in the game. Bob. Against Bubner. Bubner gets a knock. Thomas nearly. Row there. Thomas again. Let's go forward. It's a half forward underneath it. Lounder spoils. Crummy position is Gurdon. He goes to Chaplin. Chaplin on his left foot. Great goal, Chaplin. Central won by seven points, and in round nine, scraped in with a draw against North Adelaide at Prospect. Meanwhile, Norwood were now fourth and played top side Glenelg in the mud at Norwood Oval. McIntosh picks the ball up, put it right into the square. Ace, Ace has taken the mark, and he's put down. Ross Gibbs has, uh, has gone too close to Michael Ace. He would not heed the warning, so Michael Ace has been put even closer. He can't be put any closer. He's just dribbled it through. Opening score to Norwood, pulls it back towards centre wing. Tanner, straight over the top, Chigwidden, good tackle, Rowe. Tanner, through goes McDermott, onto the left boot. That will skip through. I don't think they'll get that. Brilliant goal to McDermott. He's going to get there, I think, Mike. Oh, down he goes. Kerry laid him to rest. And Michael Ace bounces up like a rubber ball. That would have put most people into orbit. Michael Ace has got it. Maybe he paid the mark, but whatever. Ace has got it. 40 metres, straight out in front of goal, that is home! Michael Ace boots his second! Free kick going to carry at the centre bounce to put the Tigers into attack. They have not kicked a goal since the first quarter. In fact, they only kicked two points. Macker. <laughs> Macker has just given away a 30 metre penalty. Steady Macker, he'll put him on the edge of the square. Now, Super's at centre half forward. <laughs> Falls over. Jimmy West now holds on to the well, he can't get hold of it at all. The handball out the back to Michael Ace. Michael Ace left foot. Oh, great goal, Michael Ace. A great goal. A handball from David Payne, wearing number 27 in this last quarter. Glenelg's second loss for the season. But they still headed the ladder with Central District half a game behind them after their draw with the Roosters. Norwood and Port were third and fourth. However, Sturt's 59-point victory over the Magpies in round nine allowed the Double Blues to grab fifth spot, pushing North Adelaide down to sixth. Torrens' 14-goal win over South put the Eagles back into contention for the five, and Woodville's victory against West brought the Warriors up to eighth. But the Bloods were now ninth, having won only two games, one more than 10th-placed South Adelaide. Kelly, Round 10, run. and at Theberton, the Redlegs belted the, the Eagles into submission by 105 points. At Glenelg, the Panthers lost by 15 goals, and a below-par Port Adelaide had an easy win against the Warriors at Westlakes. Kerr to O'Brien. Oh, is he going to kick it? He is. Just got boot to ball. Winter there, loudly there as well. On the Queen's birthday Monday at Football Park, North Adelaide kicked their lowest winning score at headquarters. Seven goals 11 to West Adelaide's four goals 11. He was clever on his feet even in the wet. Gets around, goes goalwards. Be a little offside. Oh, great mark. 
The match of the round proved to be the Sturt Central game at Football Park. Puts it up to Mandemaker, he's in a good spot, and he's marked it. Downs put it down, kick it, couldn't pick it up on the run through though, here's some pace, Eddie Hockey puts it out in front of Mandemaker, he's got the run to the ball at centre half forward, two grabs it, gee there's no one home in the square, this is a certain goal, take your pick, Thomas over the top, talking about certain goals, there it is, it wasn't certain but it finally happened, Eddie, Eddie Hocking kicked it off the ground, it's because the fight wasn't over. He was still sorting players out. It's on again to, to Botka. They're going to pay heavily for it soon. And they just have... Play on! Russell has run straight through the goals there. He's kicked it. Scott Russell, 12th kick. First goal. Puts it up high for the leading Wilmot. Botka goes for the punch. Wilmot's got it. Sturt players, they've got the trend of play at the moment. They look like winners. And winners they were, with the Double Blues winning by 19 points, their fourth consecutive win. And the Bulldogs tumble down the ladder from second to fourth. Going into round 11, Norwood was second, one game behind the Tigers. Against Sturt, both teams were evenly matched until half-time. I thought about going inside, but uh, often does it. Goes back onto that left foot, plenty of space there. Great kick to McIntosh, Painsley provides the run, the Red Legs go into the forward line. To Ace, great grab by Ace. McNeil has Francis in space, that's where he heads, the little fella underneath that one. Oh, almost a good spoil by Painter. Off it goes back to Hellier, it was good work. Rowe, the umpire had to duck. Brent Maynard to Rowe, watch him go. Feeds it off to Payne around the corner, trips at the crucial stage. Back to Rowe, in turn, the running player, Brent Maynard, Rodney Maynard, point blank range, lines it up, it's four goals into the... In the second half, the legs exploded and kicked 12 goals to the Blues' five. Nord had now taken top spot on the ladder. Playing across half forward, successfully for the second week. Hall, out in front, great mark, gives up to Tony Francis. Tony Francis has got McIntosh in the square. McIntosh has kicked one. Oh, he's mucked that up, has he? No, he hasn't. Two on one there. Tapped Glenelg out. went to Alberton without the services of Peter Carey, who was serving a one-match suspension for charging David Baker of South Adelaide. That could even be a goal. Miller got a chance. The big fella's got a hook and go. Port Adelaide go in again. They'd love another one. Up goes Harrison. Oh, big mark Harrison. Rowan Smith. Marshall won't get him. Brilliantly done, Abbott. Abbott through the centre line. Fought into attack again. Gee, that breeze has died. Up towards Hodges. Once again, he outbodied Jim West. He went wide to ball A's. He can go as far as he wants. I don't think he'll kick a goal. He centred it cleverly. Hodges there. Also, Holmes. Holmes was the player in front. Umpire bounces. It's Christie. No. <laughs> First there was Harrison, funnily enough. Towards Stephen Williams. A great player today. Picks it up on the move, left foot step for goal, and he kicks it! Oh, a great goal to Stephen Williams! That's his a ten-point win to Port, and now Norwood, Glenelg and Port were on top of the ladder, each with eight wins and three losses. Oh, what a mark, Darren Smith! Port Adelaide faced the Dogs of Elizabeth in round 12 and kept pace with them until half-time. Then, with Philip Graham in top form and Rudy Mandemaker kicking six goals, Central booted 13 goals in the second half to the Maggies' three, winning by 65 points and jumping up to the top of the ladder again. Now I don't know. He's having a horrible time down there with those Rovers, though, as he gets out of trouble, then into trouble. Graham has got the ball. 35, 40 metres out. Puts it up high. Oh, that's a great kick, Graham. Long time to go yet. Delaney. Oh! Mandemaker. He's double tapped. Mandemaker! Parker. At the parade, Norwood went through a replay of their 1987 game against North, losing by 41 points. And North slipped back into the five. The next week, and Port Adelaide jumped the legs early, and with successive losses, Norwood had dropped from first to fifth in two weeks. At Adelaide Oval, the Double Blues came from behind to beat the Bays by six points in a thriller. Glenelg were now fourth and Sturt was sixth, but only one win away from fourth spot. Blues have hit the front. Double Blues by four points, but they appeared to have lost some of their momentum. 
Jim West underneath that one. Oh, Kim Russell did that well. Feeds it on. Painter lines up the goals. It's chipped in. It's going to bounce through. Painter's got it. Everything's going the way of the double blues. Kick number 12 for Painter. Scott Russell in front, working hard. Heidsman it is that comes through with it. Tries to pinpoint it towards Maynard or Winton. Gets it there. He'll go back to Heisman. He'll steady. He goes goalwards. That's two. That's his third. Delina to Heinrich. Around the corner, Painter. He's got time. Goes in short. Goes with him on Greg Lee. Great mark. McTavish first to it. Sharky couldn't do anything with it. Lennon it is. Up from half back. Goes goals. It's his first goal, naturally enough. And the double blues doing it well. High into the forward line. Christie there. First to recover, does it well. Gives it back to Heisman. He'll use Cruz if he wants to. Goes goalwards. Heisman's fourth. Wilmot bounds out. He can't get there. West. Good desperate work. Feeds it up. He handballed to Kim Russell on the left foot. He lines up the goals. It's coming around. A goal here, and it's good night to the Bays. Oh, he's got it. Goal number four, Kim Russell. He's, that's it for the Bays. 26 and a half minutes gone in the final term. You can wrap this one up for the Double Blues. What a recovery. Glenelg ended their losing streak in round 14 by defeating Woodville, and Sturt were back in the five after disposing of Torrens. At Elizabeth, the Dogs recorded a 178-point win over South, with 14 players featuring in their 35 goals. Norwood beat the Bloods by 10 goals, and at Football Park, North Adelaide was fighting for its life against Port. Excuse me. That was a... I tell you what, there's a couple of things happening in there that weren't too tidy in, and I'm just wondering whether Laurie Arden's going to report someone he has. Daryl Hart has gone, and his blood him. pouring out of his nose or his eye. I think he's complaining to the umpire about something, but Daryl Hart, North Adelaide's captain, is reported. He lines it up. The Roosters were not producing the results of the previous three years and had lost and several close games. Tyler's first goal, put in Wade's 12th, and march on to a three-point lead. The Magpies, Greg Phillips, demonstrated some of his club's old tradition to make sure the Roosters wouldn't crow at Port Adelaide's expense. Jack Carr somewhere down there, hidden away amongst all those people and watching the game, no doubt, binding his fingernails off because the loser drops out of the five. Down to the ground level, it comes again. North Adelaide swapping the ball, out in the four. Would you believe it, Ian? That could, no. He actually pinged him for holding the man and correctly so. Siren's gone. Port Adelaide have got an unbelievable win out of this. They have got out of jail a happy coach, John Cahill. Port Adelaide have come home with a wet fella. Six teams were still in contention for the finals going into round 15, but for Glenelg, a loss to the Dogs would see them slip out of the five. After a successful start to the year, the Tigers were in a slump that could see them miss their first finals campaign since 1983. Might pay for it too. They want a free kick in there. It comes back to Gurdham. Oh, they've got numbers. They've got numbers everywhere. The kick finds McAdam. The will of the wisp in the forward line. He's standing still, but he's still making ground. And have a look at that. He's put it through the centre. His third goal, McAdam. He waves his hand there in a victory salute. Pryor's there. Almost takes a great mark. Graham launches it off. Finds Hattie Hocking. The dynamic Hocking kicks the goal. There's the goal that could be the leveller. Carey giving his all. May not be enough. The stage, I'd say, definitely not. 24 minutes gone. But the Bays are still in there working. Well, Grenfell gave it away to McTavish when he wasn't in a position to get it. Now a chance, Gurdon puts it up, Handley, good mark, that's a strong mark. He can be the mayor of Elizabeth tonight if he boots this one, because this will certainly make it game, set and match, and I think he has done it, he's got it, goal, his first. Central headed the ladder after round 15 with a game and a half break on the next three teams. Percentage was all that separated Norwood, Sturt and Port, with North half a game behind in fifth position. The Tigers were sixth, but still within reach of taking out the minor premiership if they could regain form. Western Torrens had only remote chances of making the five, while Woodville and South were already working towards 1989. 
Every year it's the big marks that thrill the crowds and this season would prove no exception. to full forward, Libis is there from behind, oh the mark by Nichols, oh what a mark, Phelps kicks it out, up goes Ops, oh big mark, Ops just flown over the pack to take a super mark, kick number three, Hodges goes up towards the full forward era, oh magnificent mark, Simpson I think it is, wait till he gets to his feet, Simpson it is, a huge mark right on the edge of the square, he's, uh, he's rucking well, just finding his feet in league football. Kick number 17 to Hannah. He's having a day out from behind. Pays! Oh, what a mark! Oh, that was great athleticism. He flew, hung himself in the air, took the ride, and came down with the mark. He is quick. He comes back to the wing. McCannum's underneath the ball. What a great mark from a load. One hand going backwards. And uh, like a lot of cricket catches, sometimes they just stick. <laughs> I reckon. Reynolds to set a half forward. Oh! Big leap there. What a magnificent effort by Kitschke. Flew over the top of the pack. They're certainly a vastly different side to what we saw last year. Up goes the Rovers. The Rovers taken one over the Ruckman. What a big leap that was. Long time to go yet. Delaney. Oh! Puts it up high to the lead. Oh, Kitschke! Oh. He went high over the pack. Soared like an eagle to take that one. Goes to the central part of the ground. And Roberts! Roberts takes a great mark. Oh, gee, hang there suspended. McNeil now puts the ball up. A high, big pack of players. And a big leap. Oh, a sensational mark by oh. Brendan Maynard. Peter, that's, oh. a, that's absolutely amazing, Mark. That, that was sensational. Justin Scanlon puts the ball up for Rodney Maynard. Winton, courageous mark. West Adelaide were improving with every game and came close to upsetting Central District in round 16. The Dogs had 12 more scoring shots than West, winning by only seven points. Try to get out of hand ball, North get lost to Sturt at Adelaide Oval, but the held their fifth right. spot because Glenelg were humbled by West Torrens. Well, that's a strong mark. Wellsby did everything except pull his head off. Whittlesey threw In another it. shot, Woodville had a four-goal win at Woodville against Norwood. Puts it up high to the lead. Now Bennett has space, can they find him? The next no, week at Prospect, Alexis North and Glenelg played off for a place in the five. The it was a bruising, desperate battle, and with the That's Roosters the losing Redden, Sims and Carlo through injury, the Bays recorded a badly needed win. That is a sensational mark. That bloke is a genius. McDermott was having another good game. Oh, Hodgman! Oh, Christy Tuoli has to look for alternatives. McDermott has to take it, he does! That uh, knock from Winton certainly would have shattered his back teeth. Hodgman to Chigwin and it's good play into the open goal they go. That's it. Good night, North Adelaide. Out of the parade, the action started before the game with an all-in brawl at the Southern Goals. The Amazingly, no early. one was reported. In the Southern Goal area, they are really at it. They're a... That's not the only fight, by the way. There's about three of them. The umpires have come in belatedly. And uh, this has happened before. Oh, England have to come back. Oh, duck the chutney, but still has the footy. Puts it in long. Up there's kicker. Kicker! Lally. McNeil back in defence for the legs. Oh, well run down. Clown is the call. Bubner puts it up now. Looking kicker. He can't quite. If he gets it, that going to give him a free kick. Oh, what a place to get it. Don't lose it now, the boy. You've worked hard for it. The umpire gave him a kick. Richardson sucked the slipper. He's gone. Neil now puts the ball up, a high, big pack of players, and a big leap. 
chance at centre half forward. Mac is in big trouble. Got it out, out of it though. Scanlon, McNeil bounces through the centre of the ground. Back to Rowe. Back to McNeil. Big chance. There's no one home. McNeil will go long. There's no one back there. McNeil's kicked the goal. Yes, Graham marks well off. In an old fashioned, hard, Jamie tough Thompson. game, it was Norwood that won the day. 15 16 to 15 2. I guess that uh, we had to win, I suppose that uh, helps that atmosphere a bit. Our blokes weren't going to uh, uh, step backwards at any stage, so it was pretty tough, I think. Another crushing defeat to South Adelaide by Glenelg, and the Panthers were looking for a place to hide. After round 18, the Glenelg Football Club reappointed Graham Corns as coach for his fifth year at the Bay. Stringer in support, lines out the goals, that's the quick reply. Sturt went down by 29 points to Central District and dropped to fifth on the ladder, as well as keeping North Adelaide in touch with the five. He'll go back. Gee, that had to be accurate to Thomas. Thomas got rid of it. The previous week, Sturt were beaten by 79 points at Richmond. Their mid-season form had slumped and the pressure was on the Brad Pack to stay in the five. Oh, a one-hander. Clem towards goal. Nichols is up. Oh, one Woodville's Stephen Nichols kicked 13 goals in round 19 against West Adelaide to come within striking distance of the magic ton. The 81-point victory brought the Warriors to 7th position, leaving the Bloods at ninth. Tottenham has battled solidly. Off goes Detman again, goes long on. Nichols from behind has the city, jumps, he's up, he's got it! Yes! It's a mark! And now he'll line up for goal number 13. Point blank range. Kicks it in, 5 this quarter, 13 for the game. At Brighton Road, the boys from the Bay could smell the finals coming up and what they wanted was another premiership. The Tigers trampled Norwood by six goals. Good with the left boot, gives it to Malikin. Here's another goal coming up, over the top to Christie. There it is, no problems at all. A double header at Football Park saw North Adelaide wilt under the pressure from the Dogs, but the 38,000 fans were given a real treat with Sturt playing Port Adelaide. This incident resulted in no report. However, League General Manager Lee Wicker reported Russell Johnston after videotape of the incident had been viewed, and Johnston was suspended for five matches, effectively ending his 1988 season. Taking umbrage at Russell Johnston's high tackle on the unfortunate Carl Delina, who stretched it from the arena. Oh, he's done it well. Foster brought it back. Chagenza snaps around the corner. It's a point. Factor with one point. The difference with played 29. Too much time left. Or needs a sit, can't find the footy. Still buttering up, conceding ground. Snook it off, gets it out. Brilliantly done, Carl Galena. Ripped the box. Down the outer side, puts the kick underway. 29 saves, gone! The Blues have done it. A brilliant win by the Sturt young side. Hung in there when the pressure was on. And has run out a brilliant winner in the dying moments of the game. 15-16. A rare occasion for the Panthers in 1988 was a close finish. Eight points against North Adelaide in round 20. Looking for Butler again, it might be a goal. It is a goal. It's a goal of South Adelaide. Oh, would you believe it? David Cutler, he kicked a 70 metre goal. Up towards Rodney Campbell. Back in defence there is Renfrey Campbell now. Campbell puts out a long handball. Simon goes. Johnny Reid disappointed, but he shouldn't be. He couldn't have expected to win realistically, but they've done well. And they've gone down to a very poor North Adelaide. 16-6, 102 to North Adelaide, 16-14, 110. I suppose to the lads' credit, they made a, a, you know, a very good game of it, but still not two points. But I might add that's a bit better than getting your head kicked in every week. And sure. uh, I thought uh, the last couple of weeks we've been playing better. And if they start to get a little bit more confidence in themselves, they'll snare a win before the end of the season. At the parade, the joy of the Double Blues win against Port Adelaide was replaced with the gloom of a 61-point destruction by the Red Leagues. He feeds it off. Rodney Maynard on the left. Goes goal with bound. Bound in the square. Shepard to Oh, that's a goal. 
physical pressure at the play with the ball is intense, but McIntosh is up to it. He feeds it out. Ducker in turn has the running player and ace. Flanked by Pettit. He elects not to use that player. Now he does. Pettit can go all the way into the open goal. Drills it in. That's a goal. Port Adelaide doesn't forget its losses very easily and with a chance at the minor premiership in mind Glenelg was an obstacle to those plans but again they had a close finish On the last Saturday of August, the Eagles picked up their eighth and last win of the season against Woodville. A 33-point victory, and they were still ninth on the ladder. Oh, it'll lob right in the square. Oh, it's bounced through. What a goal. What a miracle goal. A leg break, an off break, a goal. Michael Werner has seven goals for the afternoon, and he really is a happy boy. It's true to say that Torrance can't make the five, but we can still appeal to their personal pride and the pride of the club and put in a performance like they did today, and they've answered that. Well, let's cover that, because with the performance they put in today, it would indicate that they really should have finished a lot higher than what they're going to. Well, I don't know about that. I think that uh, considering what the club has been through this season, I've never experienced anything like it in my life. Um, and, it lo and it win next week, and we've only, uh, we've only gone down by one game from last year, so... Well, you know, be the judge. Mopping up Neville Shaw. After establishing a 40-point lead against West Adelaide, Glenelg went to sleep, and the Bloods persisted to win by two goals. A goal here puts them in front. Carries down there, sensing danger, obviously. Larkins shoots for goal, he's kicked it! Oh, my God, they're in front! West Adelaide have hit the front, you can't believe it! James, we've hardly sighted him today, a crucial kick forward. Cruz Glenelg were now fifth, and even though Norwood had beaten the Roosters by ten points, there was still a chance that North could replace Glenelg in the finals. At Alberton, Central District needed a win to keep top spot. However, the Magpies were determined to snare the minor premiership and the Bulldogs were arrogantly pushed into submission by 46 points. That's his 12th kick. Hodges up high, couldn't mark the ball. Kerr off hands. Smith, a quick kick by Smith. And he's put it through. His second goal. That's it. No doubt about it now. North had to beat Woodville to maintain their finals hopes, but the Warriors came from behind to win, with Stephen Nichols contributing nine goals, including his hundredth for a season tally of 103. And giving Stephen Nichols a supporting need. What a man and what a, what a performance. Ian. 100 goals in, what, 20 games of league football? At Brighton Road, the Tigers ensured their place in the finals with a 90-point victory over Sturt. He can snap for goal. Oh, he's done it. Oh, Chick has got it. What good work. Great Rovers goal, Nick Chick -Winnen. Kick number 10, goal number 1. Everything going right for the Bays. The legs into attack. With 15 less kicks, 9 less marks and 35 less handballs, the black and white machine was stunningly efficient, completing the game with 29 more points than Norwood. That's a magnificent kick, it could be a goal! Brilliantly done, David Hutton, that's game, set and match for sure. So after 22 home and away games, five teams were now left to face the finals. Port Adelaide finished minor premiers with 16 wins. Central District claimed second spot with 15 wins and a draw. They, like Norwood, third would have the double chance in the qualifying final. Glenelg and Sturt with 13 wins were 4th and 5th and would face each other again in the elimination final. 1987 Premier's North Adelaide never recaptured their Premiership form and would miss the finals with only 11 wins and a draw. 
Woodville and West had been inconsistent but had both improved in the latter half of the season and could look forward positively to 1989. Paul Weston resigned after round 22 and ninth placed West Torrens were seeking a new coach. South Adelaide with only one win from 22 games was slowly turning a corner that would lead to more success in 1989. Norwood and Central played first in the major round in the qualifying final, the only final the Dogs had played since 1984. towards Smith, out comes Mandamaker, needs a sit, got the footy, Lally gives it away to Smith, here's a chance to dodge in low, at the bounce, Lounder, against Hall, line ball, Hall goes down again, gee, he could be out for the count, he's bumped his head on the ground, the umpire's going to give him a free kick, the Sullivan, has time to change tackle, he put it up for Thomas, it's two on one, Duck. Once again, he's come down awkwardly. The boy is down. Landed in the middle of his toxic bone. Bandermakers at centre half forward. Bubner at full forward. Through goes Buckley. Got the ball out. Well, Thomas kicked it off the ground. Further the ball for the Dodge. Through goes Smith. He's got a space if someone will let him know about it. And he goes long. Good direct football. But the kick is coming back. Oh, brilliant opening by the Bulldogs. Lally gets it out nicely. Pryor, oh, that was troublesome. Duncan gives it to Ace. Heads towards the open goal. The legs made them pay and they hit the front in the qualifying final. There's a lot of indecision out there from Central District players. They're not doing things freely. Smith, can he kick his third goal? Hooks it back and that's a brilliant effort. Scott Lee has no one to kick it to at all. In fact, it's going to hurt them because Barmer's there to mop up at centre wing. Gives it back to Clavey. Clavey goes long to centre half forward. Braddy is there. Big Mark Ducker. The umpire will ball it up again, right forward pocket, almost out to the half forward line. Taken Anderson, puts it up, here's a chance, Stephen Rowe, right forward pocket, dummies, twist, turns, back to Maynard, Maynard, Francis, open goal, hooks, and they have got it, put it right under the legs. Francis boots his first. The Dogs by three points as we commence the second half of the qualifying final. 5-8 to 5-5, low scoring, tough game out there. Lounder gets the thump away, taken by Rowe on the check side around the corner, up towards Maynard, Braddy, Ducker couldn't get the kick away, in they go, hard a chance, Francis, could be a great start for the legs, Francis puts it on the second goal, brilliant start to the legs. Thorpe in turn goes looking for Fosdyke, back there is McAdam that goes up lost that time, Ducker, good tackle put on him, Francis clear, uses pace, gives it back now. Anderson puts it on its way up towards full four. That Anderson. Brenton Maynard off the half back line, almost up to centre wing when he takes his kick. As he goes looking for Brenton Maynard, that's a fine mark in the back. He'll slip it over to Clay. He's going to get one down. He beat the tackle, puts it up for Ace. With him is Butka. Ace gives it away to Payne. Payne out wide now to Maynard. Norwood's strong defence forced the Dogs to kick inaccurately and at the final siren it was Norwood's game, 15-10 to 8-13. Norwood would go on to play Port in the second semi-final. Norwood is the only team to win a grand final after playing in the elimination final and now Glenelg and Sturt were making their run for the flag. Glenelg were favourites to win after their big win against Sturt the week before. Getting back on it quickly now. Butterick. Just using the drop punt, not going for the check side, and the umpire said he's got it. Reynolds. And Christie. Long throw in over the top came Wellsby. McDermott gets it back to West. West pops it through. Great goal. Grenville does it well. An awkward kick. Hodgman sets himself. Heartbreaking for the double blues and Merv Kane. 
This fella's got different ideas though. Delina, the centre half board. McDermott at the back of the pack. Stringer was running. Couldn't get out to him first try. I lose the ball. Underwood likewise. I in the action again. Quickly it comes out. Now Delina. Delina puts it on its way. Getting back on the ball. It's a Sees a free kick. Short to Hodgman in space. He goes goalwards. That's his third. That's the way to do it. The Blues. Peter Reed goes to the outer side. Stringer's going to get the leap on his lonesome. Almost brought it down. Delina going to go for a gallop down the outer side. He's well shepherded. Well played. Russell Delina. Over the top, Melican. The back of the pack, McDermott puts it back. Mansell gives a chance. Hodgman shoots at him. Oh, well, that be done. Kenny Hodgman. Kick 10. Goal number four. The Bay 7 3 Sturt 111. Maynard. He invented the word space. Salisbury provides some run down the ground, but he'll be under a lot of pressure. David Iron reads it well. They need a couple of goals. If they can get them before half time, there's still a chance. Scotty Field goes goalwards. That's his first. Russell played it well. Only got it back as far as I. Painter puts it on its way. Here's a chance. Heinrich. Can't quite get it. Melican couldn't take it. Winton there. Mantle. Hewitt. Quick left foot snap. Is magnificent, Mark Hewitt. Beaten by Scott Russell early in the game. One on one. Up towards full forward. Will Mark. Oh, brilliantly done. What strength. McDermott working hard. Mantle. The main hard on the ball. Handle the ball beautifully. That's home. Cleverly back to Stringer in turn. Hodgman out wide. Is still Marshall. Into attack again, out comes Melican. Can't half volley that one. Coming to meet at Wellsby, left it behind. Melican puts it back to Hodgman. Hodgman into the pocket. Butterick again. The Tigers are old finals professionals and restricted Sturt's use of the ball, eliminating the Blues from the finals with a winning score of 15 12 to only 4 19. Gee, second or third goal to Butterick, second in the last two minutes. They didn't make the most of their opportunities, and uh, that's football, though. I guess you can sure. sometimes be lucky. We kicked four straight, and they had eight points, and um, you, they had enough of the ball to, to do a, a little bit better than that. But, uh, but nevertheless, I still thought we were pretty much in control, even though they'd had more scoring shots. As the dejected Blues left the ground, this sign stood out supporting Merv Kane. By the end of the week, Kane had been sacked and replaced by former star ruckman Rick Davies. Sturt did have some good news that week with its captain Greg Whittlesey winning the McGarry medal. The 25-year-old sentiment, a veteran of 189 senior games, polled 28 votes with Central District wingman Gilbert McAdam polling 18 votes to be runner-up. Pre-count favourite Chris McDermott came seventh with 14 votes. Greg Whittlesey was the first Sturt player to win the medal since John Halbert in 1961. Smith. The second semi-final in windy conditions and it was to prove to be one of Norwood's darkest hours. ...to Geneva, under pressure, Stephen Williams slipped it back, Darren Smith off the side of the boot, the Flyers are there, brilliantly done Justin Scanlon and he's got it at centre-half back. Greg Phillips plays it on, uses the left boot, that Norwood player has not moved, out comes Hodges, over the top ground, goal number two for Puts the ball towards the half-forward line. Rowan Smith again. Well, no pressure. Plays on. Puts it up for Hodges. Warhurst. Hodges over the top. What a brilliant fight. Took a slip and all on the run-up. Came over the top. Warhurst is sitting duck. 
And at the second grab has taken a spectacular mark. Now Stephen Williams, not a good kick around the corner. Foster ran the gauntlet, paid the penalty. Anderson pays the penalty. Holding the ball, they yell, but that's a bit optimistic. Away goes off. How good's he with the left boot? straight through the centre. His first goal. You wouldn't believe it. Nord again with the breeze, and there's hardly any players up the Nord into the ground now. Here's a chance. Dinnerbar! Oh, he's bundled it. There it is. Port Adelaide have kicked the first goal against the breeze. Hey, Barm ought to go long. Strangely enough, that ball's holding up. Well, the Port Adelaide players there just didn't know where the ball was. Francis will need to do something reasonably soon. Scanlon. Rowan Smith. Brilliant Rowan Smith. Great football to Darren Smith. Hodges may get that. He has great football for Adelaide. 26 minutes into the second quarter, Daisy, and uh, there can't be much more timely. I wouldn't think so, Peter. There's only been one goal. Port Adelaide has scored it, and that's into the breeze. So I would think only seconds remaining. And if Port Adelaide kick a cricket score in this third quarter, the game's all over. Hodges! It's only kick number three for Hodges, and he's fired that away, and he's got it. Port Adelaide, two goals into the breeze. Hutton tumbles one to the half forward line. Here's a chance, Rowan Smith, 45 metres out, puts it on its way, the up goes, set it home. Kick number six, goal number one. Brilliantly done, Rowan Smith, 6-14 to a point. Francis, Claby to the half forward line. Here's a chance now, Buckley and or Maynard. Maynard's gone, he's got a chance to run it into goal. Phillips won't cut him off, he puts it on the way, the up goes. Norwood had five losses from five games in 1988 against the Magpies and it appeared that Port had the measure of Norwood. Port kicked 10-17 to a paltry two goals five and the Magpies were into the grand final. You seem to have the wood on the legs in uh, four quarters of football up till half time they'd kick four points against you in that time. What have you got over them? Well, I like the, if, if we play them in the grand final, I'd like them to do four points in three quarters again. Dangerously close the first semi-final and no second chances the for the loser. Central kicked ten district. straight behinds they before their first goal, first and the Tigers ball. made them pay dearly yeah. for it. Butterick gets back on the ball. A chance now, but no kick from Hewitt. Over the top went Sullivan and Hodgman. Back it goes. Hewitt, is this the first goal? Richard Lounder tries to tap it down to Chaplin. Schwert got a handball out. Graham's under that. Over the top it goes. Here's a chance. Don't tell me how to kick that from there. They have. Gurdham the crumbs. Fighting his own man. Bubner gets it back from Gurdham. Now the tall one kicks long up towards full forward. Man to maker out there. Can't quite. Here's a chance. Graham will need running support. Man to maker wants it. He can't beat the tackle of McTavish. Well done. Man to maker puts it on it. Chris McDermott, and Donald's right with him. Schwert comes across. McDermott played it well. Now Millican. Marshall gets through. He had Peter Carey, and he's kicked the goal. The grab is in there. Gibbs. Dummy's back. He's through. He's got a check side one, or is he? Don't tell me he's got that one. Unbelievable. Their next trip will be walking on water. Drive from the half-back flank, quickly plays on, brings it in to kick it. He's been a danger man when he gets the ball. Gives it away now to gird him out wide of the running player is Lee. The dog's into attack up towards the half-forward line. Out comes Mandemaker. Traps it well, he's clear, hooks around the corner. The bounce will determine he's got a shot. He bounce it through. Third goal to Mandemaker. Big leap there early by McTavish, or Mansell it was. Finally, Mansell gets it out. Now it's Pryor, Pryor to Lee, Lee on the half forward line, he's clear, he'll put in a long one, it's going in long, high at a tone, brilliantly done Scott Lee, up from the back pocket, the booties first. Kicking off the ground there is Schwert, straight to Salisbury, he does one of his special kicks straight up in the air, in goes Kickett, and oh. the, another big grab by Kickett, in a fine player, he was about to play on. Kicks 14 handballs. No one's going to stand the mark. You can't do that. Well, the umpire actually played that on, which is an indication of how silly the umpire has been today. Out to Sullivan. 
Back to Pryor. Around the neck, says the umpire. McAdams jumped on a Glenelg player, and they might lose the ball. Pryor is still on the ground. He hasn't moved. So I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, Pryor's out. They call for a stretcher. Butterick is about 40 out. Very acute angle. No hope of kicking a goal from there. Puts it up now. Who's got the big sticky fingers? Van Dommel. Off he goes. Just towards half forward. No one there. Hocking. Late on the seat was Thomas. Mandemaker. Gets it over to Lally. Into goal he goes. Oh, they need this one. The dogs, that's home. Still a chance. That's his first. 77 plays, 52. Hewitt inside the half back line. The Bays are just going to hang on to this ball as often as they can. Kick number 12 back towards Lounder. Oh, got up very early. Where's cleverly done? Hodgman needs to sit. He gets it. Looks for a running player. He's under pressure. Gives it away to Alan Stringer. Stringer in turn has Butterick, but he goes for length. Tumbles one in towards full forward, and it's well taken there by Gibbs. And Gibbs launches it off. Oh, what a kick. The Tigers were on a roll, winning by 21 points, while Central District's poor finals record had again left them on the outer. The Bays were now only one game away from their fourth consecutive grand final. First, they had the preliminary final against Norwood. Norwood bounced back from their inept performance the week before to produce the match of the finals. as Wayne Stringer clears the ball. John Hall. Oh, lucky he didn't uh, contravene. Nance has got pace. Should kick a goal. And uh, does. No pressure on him, on him at all. Leads in the race to the ball and loses it. Ace backs up. Can he hook it around? That's a good kick. Gives Storitsky a charge. And he's marked it. Oh, great mark. Storitsky. Justin Storitsky. They want it one on. Ducker wants it in quickly. He's going to put it up for the lad. Ducker sets himself. Russell Ducker. Boyd Bouchereau. Oh! Goal! Unbelievable goal. One on one in the square. They forgot the leather. And Maynard has boot. Norwood, seventh goal. 7 10 to 9 7. Now Grenvold. Well put. Grenvold from centre wing. Drives a long one up. West sets himself. Warhead. Ace is his target. One hand to. Just feel the pressure on the backman in both sides. And that's a beautiful example of the sorts of pressure the players are feeling. The only, uh, only difference is they can do something about it. That dear lady can't. And Storitsky tries to get through. Dagger off the ground. Well, Hewitt did it well. He'll get it over the top now. Here's a chance for Bickler. He'll kick long up towards full forward. Christie against Balm. Christie in front. The ball back through. Getting back on his butter. If he can get it, it's a goal to the back. Ducker on a lead. A lot of pressure, Ducker. They really need this. 21 minutes, nearly 22 minutes. They've wasted too many opportunities in this quarter. It is not to go through. And he comes. That's a good goal, young fella. Five points of difference. The Bay's just hanging on. That's all they're doing. They reckon they can save the game rather than win it from here. It's the Bickler on the half-back flank. Baum can't sit down on the bunker. It's the Bickler. Screws a tumble, punt kick, McDermott! Good mark, gee, that was an awkward one, the pack misread it. And McDermott will slow it down, the strain is enormous on the Norwood hierarchy. McDermott, kick number 16, goes to Carey! He can't quite find it, Buckley's back in the fix. lost the football, here's a chance now. Tanner, off the half-back line, it's a loose ball. It's the Bickler, has a chance to straighten up the kick long. Puts it back towards full forward. They set themselves. West 
Bumped the ball away. Carey looks for runner. Oh, trying to find Hodgman. Couldn't find him. In goes Hodgman. Courage. Pettit. The bottom of the pack. Coming out now. Kick back by Tanner. Storicki it was. Stabitler. Gibbs can hardly stand up. Gets it to McDermott. Try to unload it. Now quickly Stabitler on the left leg. Hooks to the half forward line. Carry in. Can't bring it down. Ross players walking on their knees. Hellyer floats one in. Maynard. Gibbs. Salisbury. Seabone. Brings back to centre wing. Who's out here? And I think the ball is out on the full note as a throw in. What a game. Thank you, Andy. These teams been a sensational game. Up they go. Kerry tries to take it and does through Anderson. Takes it out of Kerry's hands. Tigers shoot at a grand final. 10 11, 71. The league's lose to the now. 11 10, 76. Big banner really does say it all. In 87, the 1988 Grand in Final, the ultimate back. game, and Glenelg was looking for its fifth Premiership flag. For Port Adelaide, it'd be their 28th. Magpie coach John Cale had already taken out four of those flags, but he knew that the 88 Premiership would vindicate the club's decision to remove Russell Ebert and reappoint Cale. March there was Cruz. Mulaney let it go through. Mansell threw half forward. It's a long bomb. It's on a high kick through half forward. Darren Smith not contesting. Hodges without the ball. Kept it wide. Luck of the bounce of the ball. McDermott trying to work through. It's out. Hodgman shoots the goal and it's got his third. Timmy Hodgman, goal number three for Glenelg. And a 17-point lead coming up to the 21-minute mark. He reads the play very well. Now it's Ogs as he kicks across ground looking for Hutton. Oh, it was well placed and well marked. Back goes Salisbury for Glenelg. Marty tackles Brown. Drives towards the goal square. Grenville gets back there for Glenelg. Oh, it's gone out. Oh, what a magnificent off break. Rowan Smith swoops on that one. Chips in the pass. He's looking for Hutton. Oh, that's another strong mark by Hutton. Hines taps it back to that player. Haber, he can kick a ball a mile. That one's misdirected, they go straight to David Marshall. Awkward looking kick, coming from behind. West working through Salisbury's court, he threw it away. Seabone now caught. Port Adelaide are beginning to build. Foster's kick is through half forward. Knocked away by Hodges. On the run is Rowan Smith. Bends it to the goal square. Yet we don't believe the breeze to be that strong. Mantle, in fact, won that tap out towards Hodgman. His handle was a magnificent one to Grenville. He spears out a pass, and this time James West holds on to it. Harrison in position on the back play across field. Williams, well shepherded out by Ops, drives across field to the lead of Hodges. That's good football, and Hodges takes a great ball. He's injured. I think he's done a knee, Jerry. His legs were caught underneath his body. Hodges has recovered. His shot at goal is good. It's his first one for the day. It's number 68 for the year. Off the side of the boot. Not a good kick from an experienced player. Martin Leslie held under it. Very, very strong indeed. Carey back there on the back play. Big Super could be playing his last game. Stringer held back on that kick. He tried to get it to Cruz. Delaney with the spoil. He's clearly on top in that battle. Darren Smith well tackled. Oh, Marshall. Two beautiful pirouettes. Now out towards Alan Stringer. It's a wobbly left foot kick. And West has taken the mark. Drives too half forward. Darren Smith will contest. Ro where Rowan Smith works through. There's no one in the goal square. He's dobbed at that line. Up comes Hunter. to the lead of Marshall. Rowan Smith taps back looking for Marnie. Wayne Marnie clear, kicks blindly. Hodges on the lead, Salisbury not quite. Foster, he's got it! Foster gets his first goal. What a late seven. And suddenly they are 28 points clear and it's on the home play. Hodges in there, Seabar and Glenelg really getting the numbers in. Darren Smith. So whatever. Well, that can provide Port Adelaide are there to answer.
Mansa. His kick is high. It could be Wayne Stringer's last game. Mansell with a spectacular mark. Well, he's been quiet since the first term. He gets it back to Marshall, back to Mansell. They're placing themselves under pressure. Cruz takes front position once more. Chigwidden with the crumbs. Hodgman wants it in the pocket. That's where the ball goes. A oh, magnificent pass by Chigwidden. He's starting to get touches. That's why Corns brought him on. He's had a quiet one. Foster in pursuit. Maynard in trouble but gets the ball away. Carey sets himself. But it goes down to Butterick. He steadies. And Butterick is goal. Strong overhead mark. At the back of the pack, mopping up his carry. Oh, he overran the football. Brown held on to it. Snaps towards goal as he kicked another one. He has. Well, David Brown, two magical goals. And that could nearly seal the fate of this Glenelg side. Oh, Skips, he's been quiet. The long handle out towards Mark Hewitt. He's only played in one grand final. That was last year's when the Bays were thrashed. And Butterick's taken the mark. Bruce Avenet. Another veteran of... 108 games for Port Adelaide only, but plenty in Melbourne. Darren Smith comes in field. Grimwell in the way. Oh, charging through. Going for goal is Harrison. He gets his first. And Port Adelaide back to a 27-point lead with eight and a half minutes goal. Times Brown, centre wing, over the top. Harrison again gets clear. He'll go for goal. He likes these goals on the run. Kicks it low. Hodges! Will be paid the mark. Scott Hodges. He floats a punt kick inside half forward. Oh, Bruce Avanet is superior again. It's been a great season in 88. Well done, John Cale. As Stephen Williams spears in a pass and finds Roger Kerr. And there's the man. And a very emotional John Cale. But this time Gibbs or misjudged the ball poorly. Seabound tried to work through. Jennifer gave it to Darren Smith. And Williams gets through and belts it home. Well, if they need another one, that's it. Jack Cloud is absolutely elated. Williams gets his first goal. A high kick, little distance, and Phillips sets. Crew spoiled. Advantage played as Marnie breaks clear. There's no one in the goal square. Marnie's gone for home. A big kick. Up line. Bruce Abernathy has been announced as the Jack Odie medalist, I would believe, for Grand Final 1988. My pleasure, Vince Thomas Hemore still comes to Port Adelaide and congratulations.